cool. think uh, that's where it all starts. It all starts at, at campfires and uh, you know talking about it at bars and whether it, it needs to change. Um, I don't know. I think talking is powerful and maybe uh, not just talking to your friends, talking to people outside your circle of friends that just agree with you is a good step. I mean, uh, I don't know if this is a good reference, but the way like the Nazis uh, took power was it started in beer halls. You know, it started with like local unions getting behind it and enacting things and they were just talking, you know, they were just talking to their friends and then and spread out and it's a powerful force. I don't know, I don't think it needs to go violent. I think that would be bad. I think Occupy was a great thing. And um, talking to friends from Europe, they were really impressed and they were saying how this is a revolutionary thing. This is something that really hasn't happened in the United States, or at least hasn't happened in a really long time. You know, if you compare it to like protests in maybe the sixties or something, nonviolent protests. But um, I don't know. I don't. I don't think uh, maybe the uh, you know the talking has to change. Just maybe talking to more people and being more vocal about it. I actually heard Paint Black one time uh, down at Fest say like it's not enough to hear people use derogatory terms towards gay people and disagree with it, you have to tell them you disagree with it and why you disagree with it, because then they'll think about it. And I think that's the next step, not just talking to your friends and thinking about it, but spreading what, what you think and trying to change other people's minds that way. Very cool. Very cool. Well I, I think one thing to add for me is that, um, like, like you were saying about like changing like basically the method of like reaching people sure and like in Europe things maybe became more violent or like they were more like direct action whereas in Philadelphia specifically you had people at Occupy that were it was very nonviolent and very just trying to raise awareness but also doing a lot of direct action things that weren't involving like I would say any type of violence they were they were cooking food for the homeless they were like had sign making stations. They had places for people to go to express their anger. And I feel like if you're if you're protesting against the violence of the way that our government is violent or the way that capitalism is violent, if you're protesting that and you're reducing yourself to physical violence towards other people, I feel like you're belittling your cause a little bit. You're belittling the respect that you should have for other people and that's not the idea that you want to permeate through that like through the cause you want people to understand that this is nonviolent that that change doesn't have to be violent that that people don't have to be violent towards each other that economic systems don't necessarily need to be violent that government doesn't need to be violent but we live with this every single day and i think it might be enough to talk about it maybe it's not enough but I feel like to to go towards any violent method is degrading the way that we feel or the way that you think. You know, it's, violence is the wrong way all the time. With you guys winding down on the horizon, I'd really like to just take a minute and kind of have you guys rate your catalog of releases from beginning up till the most present and just kind of your take on them. Maybe give them a 1 to 10 scale and just kind of bring <laughs> us, bring us, take us back to the early days of One Win Choice all the way up. So let's start with the first release. What was the, what was the first One Win Choice release? I mean, I would say the very first release, uh, aside from a song we released on Napster when I was 15. <laughs> uh, that we recorded with one computer mic. The first official release was called Code Adam, named after uh, something that ShopRite does. Uh, and I'm pretty sure I was I was 16. I'm 27 now, so that was 11 years ago we released that album. That was our uh, six song EP. I give, I, would, that, I give it a zero. Yeah, I would give it a zero. <laughs> I would, yeah, I would give it a zero. On a scale of one to 10, a Half or half. <laughs> yeah, we recorded ourselves. It was DIY as fuck, but it sucked. <laughs> yeah. it really sucked. You gotta, you gotta start somewhere though. All right, you're next. You I got gotcha. you. All right. So what was, so what followed, and what year are we at now? I think we're like at 2005 or something. The next release that I remember really like that we did was probably All the King's Men. I know, I know there was something in between. How but many songs were on All the King's Men? Was the, that's the first thing that counted because it was actually on a record label. 
all the kings in the what record label? Was it Scorpion? That was on Scorpion? We didn't put it what about uh Oh is that other the thing that remember we put a record out that came out it looked like a it was a CD but it looked like vinyl. Chris Manolio drew the cover for the CD. Oh, the last the last laugh. No, the last laugh was the next one though. Oh. That was the next one. That that one sucked too. That one sucked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, so, yeah, so it was. All right, so all the Kings men, where where are we going with for that one? A two? I'm gonna say one or two. Okay, one or two. That was in two. college. Yeah, one or two. Yeah. I mean, it was on a record label. We played some shows on it. Yeah. You know, we played around the tri-state area a little bit. Yeah, no and what water. was, like, the prevailing sound of that record? Like, what would you compare it to? I'd say, like, anti-flag-ish punk rock. Yeah, Bad, bad Religion anti-flag. Yeah, we something like that. Okay. Bad Religion, then. Okay. So, number three. What What's the title? What year are we at? All right. All the King's Men. Next next real release was the Heartfelt Discord split. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. Eternal yeah. Hope Records. Yeah, and that record, I think, like, there's a song that I would still play today that I really like. Mm -hmm. November second was awesome. I thought it was the song we covered. That was the Heartfelt Discord the song you want to play. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just no, but that record was pretty good. I mean, yeah. I would give it like a five, mm -hmm. four or five. Yeah, that's okay. being ge very generous. I actually I wrote the record, so yeah. I actually <laughs> put it on the other day and listened to it and. I, that's the only one of our records I've listened to. That, that was the first back. record that was mastered. Yeah. That, that, that shows you something about our progression. We're like, what's mastering? <laughs> <laughs> right so on. When you reach a certain age, you have to get things mastered. <laughs> yeah. That was the first one. Okay, okay. So that was number three? Six or seven, but that's fine. Three. Yeah, the rating, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that number three in the chronological yeah, order? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. Uh, so after that was... Never spend his belief. Well, we did a very serious demo, three-song demo. Would you count that as a release? No, it was just demo. That was just the demo. Okay. Okay. Demo. What year are we talking? That's 2006. 2006, 2007. Yeah, it was Border Wars. It was, 2000. It was called Demo 2006. Oh, oh, yeah. I thought we were talking about the uh, the next real release. Never spend his belief. Yeah, but the demo before that was. Oh, uh, that was 2006. Yes. Never spend his belief came out 2007. Okay. Yes. I'm gonna still give it, a, give it like a five or a six. Yeah, I'd give it a six and a half. It was good. It was good. We tried really, really hard. We tried our best. It was recorded know. really well. Uh, we just. Jerry Myers paid a lot of money for that record. Yeah. <laughs> There's good artwork for it. It. Uh, yeah, listening back, I don't. I don't really listen to that record anymore. But there's two songs off it we play once in a while, and uh, it was a very important record in one way, should I just put it that way. <laughs> okay, very cool, very cool. And that brings us to your most recent release? Well, we had a seven inch in between called Define Redefine. Oh yes, okay. That was when our, our drummer now, Justin, joined the band. I'll give it, for songwriting, I'll give it like a seven. Okay. Maybe a 7.5. Recording. He is the songwriter. Recording wise, <laughs> I'll give it. You know, like we kind of rushed it. We did it like right before a tour. We we're like, we gotta, we gotta record right now. I'll give it like a five for like how we rushed it. Yeah, the, the sound quality is not good. It's just we just, you know, we're still learning. We played a song tonight off it. We did. Hell yeah, we did. Okay. Okay. And that brings us to conveyor though. All right. Honestly, I don't know how to rate conveyor. I think that's one of the best albums that I've. It's the best album I've ever been a part of. That I ever had a hand in writing or recording. I was so excited about it after we released it. So fucking proud about it. I don't know how to rate it. Right on. Well, how did you guys approach like the writing and recording process compared to you know the prior releases? I would imagine you took all the things that you learned on the the previous recordings. It was honestly kind of similar because we we went through it the same way. Like we're like, all right, let's go to a studio. That was kind of like not different, but. Like, all right, we're gonna go to a proper studio, but then we did the guitars and the bass ourselves. Like, we did this, some of the shit in my house. Like, we record a lot of it ourselves. Like, the way we had always done it, cause we'd just been getting better it was, and better. It was at a good it. mix because Never Spend Disbelief, the whole length before, was all in the studio. Everything before that, we did all ourselves. So, this record, we were like, let's combine. We'll do what we can ourselves and the stuff we need to go to the studio, do it there, and just put all our effort into it. I think we just learned a lot over the years about how to properly record a good record and like how to make things sound tight and make things sound the way they should when it's what you want people to hear from your band. Right. So you pay attention to more things like even like track order, like the order of the tracks on the album 
everything like yeah, that. Totally, totally. Right on. All right, very cool, very cool. Well, hey, I would like to thank you both for taking a few minutes with Blow the Scene readers from around the world. We really appreciate your time, and we look forward to keeping up with your future endeavors, whether they be music or otherwise. Cool. Thank you very Cheers. much. We appreciate it.